Love Talk Radio. Are you ready to take a bite out of the competition? Are you looking for ideas to make your business better? Welcome to the Core Business Show with Tim G.K. Sponsored by Apple Capital Group. At the core of every successful business, you'll find people making a difference. And with each episode of The Core Business Show, we talk with those people, examine those ideas, and explore the strategies that make them special. Now, the host of The Core Business Show, Tim Jacquet. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of The Core Business Show. I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Today, I have the pleasure of having Phil Sayer. He is the author of Jim and Air, Retire 2. Not from. If you would like to speak with him, give us a call at 347 324 3460, or you can pose your question in the chat room and I'll go ahead and read it out on the air. So, Phil, welcome to the program. Well, thanks a lot, Tim, for having me. I guess to begin with, kind of tell us about yourself, where you're from, and how did you get into financial planning retirement? Well, I'm more or less into the idea of retirement than the financial planning side of it, but when I What's happened is I was in business for myself for 45 years, and when I got close to retirement, I saw a lot of my friends retiring, and a lot of them weren't retiring, but some of them that were did good, and some of them didn't, and the ones that really Mm -hmm. didn't do good were the ones that just had problems with their time structure after they retired, and they hadn't planned on it, so they didn't know what to do with themselves, and so retire to not from goes on the premise that you need to bank planning as well as money for your retirement because the statistics that are new now that are just staggering as far as the retirement community is concerned, Mm -hmm. like 10,000 people are retiring, are turning 65 every day and only 10% can really afford to retire. So it's something that I think that people ignore and they let kind of let retirement sneak up on them. And so the book Retire to Not From helps motivate the person to actually plan on doing something after their retirement. So I've been small business owners. I mean, we have our passion to go in to something and look for a business. When we start a business, it becomes successful or it comes to a level that we're comfortable with. But we never thought about how to exit that particular company or are we going to some of our dreams, okay, I'm going to hand, the, hand my construction company to my kid, don't have any interest whatsoever. And then, <laughs> right. and then I look at to the point, okay, now what I'm going to do, because this is supposed to be in back of my mind, is my retirement. If he get, continues to go on, I can pass it and we just split the uh, the profits at the very end. Or if I sell it, uh, my idea of my company is making a million dollars. And it's pretty common. They think they're going to get a million dollars out of it versus was the net income. So, and that's pretty typical. When you started on this path, did you run into a lot of that? They thought they're going to hand it to their kid and, and their business continue to thrive and they're going to share the profits? So did they think they're going to sell it for a certain price and they end up not getting that price? Or did they, once they are, some cases, the business closed because there was no one there to take over? Right. Well, as far as construction is concerned, it depends upon how tangible the business is and it's mm-hmm. the value there. That was my problem with me, and that's why I started another business in 2003 where right now we manufacture stone mantles, kitchen hoods, and that sort of thing besides writing on the side. I guess I'm hoping to retire to writing, but anyway... If you've got something that's real tangible, you can sell it or pass it on. The big thing is to pass it on to your son and have him take the ball or staff, whatever you want to relate it to, and carry your legacy on and help him out. But that's not always the case. Sometimes it's the exact opposite. So I just talked to a cabinet maker whose son has a degree in accounting, but he wants to go back to his dad's trade and work with him in that business. I said, well, I told him, well, look, if he's got a degree in accounting, he's, it's going to be successful because he can handle the money. But mm-hmm. those cases are far and few between. If usually in a trade, you'll have someone that either has been in it for a long time or second generation or third generation just passed down. But 
it's tough, but you have to have something tangible to sell. And, and that's what I was looking for when I created my company. But when I wrote Retire to Not From, I just saw people retiring with no plans whatsoever. I mean, the ones that had money, it was, it seemed to be worse effect on them because they thought that they would be able to stay at home and do nothing or play golf a couple of times a week and then go on trips with their wife. But, you know, that's still not fulfilling for them when they found out after working for 45 years that their day isn't really structured. And that's the problem with not doing anything. And it shortens your life. It One, one thing that we found out is that people get stagnant. They don't, when they're not accomplishing something, they're not being fulfilled, then mm-hmm. their health kind of takes a back seat also. And it's perpetuated, in other words. So, I follow. Uh, okay. Hey, taking it in the same account, for example, you have a specialized trait like cabinet making and is only going to be as good as your skill force. Taking that, and when you mention it to something that's tangible, do normally they are taking an apprentice under them and get a a good sub employees that are really good in that craft, or just really dependent on one particular person to carry it out? If that's making well, sense. If you like, let's say you you don't have any sons that want to take over your business, but you have a a nice manufacturing business like in in the cabinet trade, and you can work a deal where you can sell it to your employees and still. <laughs> have a retire and still have a some kind of pension off of your company and uh, you know there's a lot of business lawyers out there that could work out deals like that and it could be beneficial to the employees too especially if it was a profitable high-end type of shop where they didn't have to compete with the uh, other manufacturers that proliferate the market with their advertising and like big showroom type atmospheres the is the mom and pop stores can survive with marketing but it takes getting the word out and knowing who their target customers are to do that i have that problem with my business my business is a very, very niche business not every house has a stone mantle or a stone kitchen hood or stone columns and arches so i have to really gear my advertising to that particular market and i'm the ones the jobs that i bid on i get a high percentage of them but you know that's just because i'm a niche business uh, okay it works good and my i figure my target is to sell the business is to someone who has a similar company that is bigger that wants to have a, a mantle division like a fireplace company manufacturer that you know wants to put a line in that has outlet around the united states to put plug in those types of mantles and kitchen hoods that sort of thing okay the well, last question regarding this regarding employees have employees been able in that particular case to step up to the plate and say yeah we can we we will own your company have that been really a successful and large a company is it's successful because the risk is spread out. However, when a smaller company have those been really successful that they will take the lead and now they have part ownership of this business. They want to make sure everything goes well, that things are become successful. They put the extra in it. If that makes sense. Sure. Yes, it does. And if it depends upon who the employer is, though, if the employer is hard to work for and he's got a big turnover in his business, he's not going to be able to do that mm-hmm. just simply for that reason. But if a person's a good person to work for, if he's got loyal employees, if he's got really good craftsmen that work for him, the management part is can continue. And he, what he would, he would have to do is go to a few key people and say, here's what I'm thinking about doing. What do you think? Instead of selling it, selling my business to so and so, I'm I want to I want you guys to purchase. It. And then those you get the feedback from those two key people, two or three, four, whatever key people, and then you go for it. You present the plan, the company, what their 
risks are, what their obligations are, what how much money that the person that's selling it is going to make, and it, it can be a really good venture for both parties. Okay. Wow. I guess what we're going to do is real quick, and we're going to dive more into your book. We're going to take a, a break real quick, and then come back and go towards towards more about your book. Again, you're listening to the Core Business Show, and we'll be back in one moment with Phil Saylor. You're listening to the Core Business Show, sponsored by Apple Capital Group. Apple Capital Group in Jacksonville, Florida, is a commercial lender that specializes in asset-based loans, equipment leasing and financing, invoice financing, commercial real estate loans, and asset-based financing in the U.S. and Canada. Apple Capital Group is a direct lender that lends on their private equity investment portfolio. 90% of most loans are decided within two hours, and vendor funding within 24 hours after documents are completed with a one-page application. No slow no's, just a quick decision and a fast yes. To get more information about lending from Apple Capital Group, call 866-611-7457. That's 866-611-7457 to speak with one of our loan specialists. Or visit us right now at applecapitalgroup.com. Welcome back to The Core. Once again, here's Tim Jacob. We'll be back with Phil, Phil Saylor. I'm sorry. You just have the power of <laughs> flicker. I'm glad the system didn't go down. Well, Dream and Air retired too, not from. I guess this dive more into about the book and how this book is constructed. It kind of tell us the outline when you decide to write this book, how you will outline it to, mean, to communicate it to the audience. Well, I started out with an example of a guy, and I took it's called a first chapter is called a timeline for Charlie, and it takes this guy from when he was born all the way to when he was dead and and um it tells you what he did before during and after retirement and then there's a lot of topical things related to retirement like fear of flying it was amazing what if i when i studied the the trouble of fear of flying i was amazed at how parallel it, it fit so there's a chapter on fear of flying that will hopefully enlighten you about what it is you need to do, and there's chapters like the bucket list and um, mandatory retirement, and also encore professions or other jobs. The encore professions are going to make up a lot of work for people who have to retire or they just want to retire from what they've been doing for 45 years. I figure maybe when I'm 70 or something like that, I'd like to sell my business. I have plans to build it until about then to uh, and then retire and also there's a chapter on taking care of yourself but mm -hmm. people really need to concentrate on more on their core they I and these are problems that I had too and mm -hmm. that just writing the book helped me to gain some discipline to take better care of myself watch what I ate just so that in my later years, I would I could be healthy. So there, it's a lot of responsibility that retiring and being an elder that people don't really consider when they're under fifty. And it's something that, like I said before, it ought to be banked along with your money and your four hundred one k, just like anything else. And what I suggest doing is before you retire is to treat retirement like you're starting a business and. Whether you whether it's a it's just a, a skill to get you motivated to do that, but if you sit down and write a business plan on your retirement and put it in everything that goes into like a mission statement and a budget, how many trips you're going to take a year and how much they're going to cost and where that money's coming from and that sort of thing, you can kind of put your next twenty or thirty years right on paper. And it's more tangible. It's more feasible, really. And that's where I think Retire to Not From will give some insight on just how to handle my retirement. Because whether you think you you have or not, you don't know until you get there. And Absolutely. So it's like a lot of people do know what they're going to do when they retire, but some people don't. And With the business owner, we, we have so many demands on ourselves. 
people going left and right, and you have so many distractions. If you're 40 years old and you own your own business, and you know about retirement, but really haven't thought about it, what the first steps you advise them to do in any field. They say, well, I don't have any money. I mean, should you? I don't know if I can really can trust a financial planner. What's your advice that you should give them? You give them to say, hey, this is what you really need to do. Start something, if nothing else. And here's a couple of suggestions what you need to do. You know, one big back. suggestion that I've got is to take Dave Ramsey's course. And okay. um, that really puts you ahead of the game, I think. And we've done it twice, my wife and I have. And the first time, it was more like my wife took it because I was kind of busy. <laughs> yeah, and then the second time, she encouraged me to do it. And I said, okay, let's go for it. And we did. And we've gotten a whole lot of stuff done because I was involved, too. And it's just natural. I don't make any excuses for not doing it like I was supposed to 15 years ago. But and plus, his program has evolved and he's gotten a lot better too. So mm-hmm. it's, it's something that really has helped our household. That's for sure. Well, tell us about that program. Uh, is this Financial Peace University yes. course? That's what it's called. Okay. Yes. And uh, one of the things that he really levels it out to you with as far as insurance is concerned, what type of insurance to buy, what type not to buy. And he's made a lot of insurance companies mad, but I think that once you see how each plan works, and I really had not concentrated on insurance. I've had it, over, I've paid for it, but never really used it, never had a desire to use it as a investment tool or anything like that. So uh, we've done term life and that's it. But uh, The health insurance, everything you do, really, from the way you manage money to the way you think about it. And as far as my skills were concerned, I was I was good at math, but I wasn't a good accountant. And so that's I can see after taking this course how that's hurt me over the years. I'm more the creative source and I can get in and get things done that way. But, you know, now I'm a better money manager, too. And it's in the nick of time, too, because I think that we'll get our house paid down and get out of debt before we, we have to retire. Yeah, absolutely. I think many business owners, we don't really think about, okay, what our priorities are. Of course, as we have windfalls in our businesses, and sometimes we have windfalls and sometimes we have deserts, and to take those opportunities to bank on money and to pay off Make sure you keep your debt low as possible. Make sure, if, if nothing else, to take care of your own household. Put that money to try to really pay down the principal of your house. So one person has mentioned, I think, in business years ago, at least I don't have to worry about ever being homeless <laughs> because I'm going to make sure my house is paid for before it starts stressing me out. And as many business owners, we think about everything else and take vacations. Maybe if you get something that's, not so expensive that take decades to pay for. Maybe get something in reason that you can get paid for in a good, solid neighborhood and build from there. At least you can say in 30 years or whatever, 20 years or 15 years, if you commit to 15 years, at least you say your house is paid for. Now, let's go through the next stage, just old-fashioned way. What if a person can't afford to retire but has to stop what he or she is doing that at a certain age. What's your advice on that? Well, it's, it's more reason to really plan on what you're going to do after you retire. And I think that just reading Retire To, Not From will help an individual get a grasp on that and want to work toward his whatever he's going to do for the next 20 or 30 years after he has to stop working for whoever he's working for. If you mm-hmm. take a piece of paper, draw a small circle on it and put right inside the circle comfort zone and on the same piece of paper, right, make a bigger circle and write on the inside where the magic happens. And that's what you need to, that's where you need to get to. You need to come out of your comfort zone and you need to get into that bigger circle where everything happens. And okay, it's an idea that people don't think about because they haven't really had to take the chance to, do other things. Hobbies are a great source of income for people. The internet 
because hobbies need to be serviced. <laughs> so if you have a passion for something, let's say you like to fly model airplanes or something like that, then you might be able to get into doing something with that hobby to make money on. Whereas mm-hmm. you would never think about doing it while you were working for the graphics company that you worked for 45 years or selling the insurance or real estate. But if you've got something that you're good at, then that's the best branch, I think, to take off on. Consulting is a great opportunity for people who retire and want to continue wow. their skills, make money, and mentor people. You know, if you can if you can start getting into it just before you retire, who knows, you might be able to, depending on your field, you might be able to retire early. But big companies, if you work for a big company, they're not going to care if you check out early. As a matter of fact, a lot of companies offer early retirement packages. If you can take one and you've got your planning down on what you're going to do, take it. I have friends that have done that and have been successful on a second and third career. And it's really neat to see them, what their talents are, how their talents have gone from one totally different business to another one. And there's some examples in my book of that. And it's encouraging to think that if somebody else can do it, I can do it. And I'm sorry about the dog barking. Uh, that's all right, but um, uh, they just went outside. No, that, that's all right. Okay, lastly, after the reader read read your book, what they walk away with? What will they walk away with? Well, I'm hoping that they'll walk away with a new confidence that they're going to be looking forward to retiring instead of kind of letting it sneak up on them and kind of dragging their feet on it. It's retirement has a lot of connotations connected to just the word retirement. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of finality connected to that word retirement and you don't want any part of that. I don't care how old you are. So, <laughs> But it, it's something that you can't do anything about. It's here, it's there. You just what I don't want to change anybody's mind about retirement. What I want to do is change their mindset about retirement and there's a big difference. Wow. Wow. That is really awesome. Well, any last words you'd like to leave our audience with? And where can we find your book? And what's your website address? Okay, the website address is retiretonotfrom.com. And mm-hmm. that you can buy the book there from Tate. You can download it. Of course, all the other big companies have it. If you buy it off the book off the website, it'd be great. You can read mm-hmm. the introduction there and go for it. But anyway, Eric Hoffer once said we are more ready to to try the untried when what we do is inconsequential. And that's what I'm talking about, getting out of your comfort zone. You got to go where it's happening. And I think that a lot of people need to have the mindset to do that before they can actually do it. It's just like me and working out. I had to get the mindset that I needed to work out to strengthen my core so that I could get around better and really function well in my later years and it was so it it became so so much important later on than it was when I earlier because earlier I was really active and never had mm-hmm. to work out so I had to gain the discipline to do that and that's tough that was really tough but and I'm still working on it so <laughs> <it's> a, <laughs> I totally understand yeah it's like I'm only 10 pounds above my what do you call it mass body weight whatever it is, but uh, yeah, that's it, it's still 10 pounds to work on. So Absolutely. <laughs> but again, I get, again, you said you can get your book off of your website. And what's your yeah. website address again? So, RetireToNotFrom.com. Okay. Just one word all the way through, RetireToNotFrom.com. And you can friend me on Facebook, send me an email if you have a question. You can download it or buy the hard copy. Perfect. Okay, great. Well, Phil, I really appreciate you coming out to the program and talk about your book, Dream and I Retire To, Not From. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Have a great day. All right. You too. Yeah, this has been another production of The Core Business Show with Tim J.K. You can download this episode on iTunes on Blog Talk Radio, or you can go to blog.applecapitalgroup and get a transcript. Thank you for listening to the program. We do invite you to Google Plus these episodes or to share these episodes and write comments about them, what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show. 
Now let's get some interaction so we can know exactly what we need to still work on. Thank you for listening again. Everybody have a great day. Happy Monday. Thank you for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet. For more information about equipment financing and asset-based loans, visit our website, applecapitalgroup.com. That's applecapitalgroup.com. Or call us at 866-611-7457. We hope you'll join us for our next episode. And remember, you can always get to The Core via iTunes. You'll find all our previous episodes there. And thanks again for listening to The Core Business Show with Tim Jacquet.